shimmering eyes. I started with the next line, which is, I want to sing like a continuous echo of splitting hymens. So I think, um, for me, that those that that text about the the singing and the splitting is kind of a connection between a certain type of, I guess, openness in singing, um, of sacrifice in singing, like of giving yourself and cutting in yourself a little bit um, in order to give something that has a certain that has an otherness in the voice and maybe um, a very um, a very sort of sincerity that is in the sound more than in the words so that it can really split a face open, it can split words open and it can split ideas of sexuality open. For me there's a big connection between singing and sexuality and there's also like this connection I think in my lyrics between um, the mouth and the sexual organ. So experiences are, and I think that is that is partly why we're so interested in listening to music as well because it's so so much a part of um, our identity and our our own openness to music and to um, experiencing things. The eye, the eye. My experience is kind of kind of detached because I wasn't in any way involved in it and so my experiences was, was actually mainly through um, the feeling of this collective um, sorrow I guess or mourning shock like everybody else being part of this um, collective um, emotion and also then meeting it through doing this music because I was I was recording because I was um, creating a piece and the deadline was like two weeks after the 22nd of July. So I kind of, ha I had no choice but try to make something in that time. And, and um, the, the TV would always be on. Um, I was at someone else's house working in, a, in a, another city. The, um, so the TV was on and then I was listening back to what, I've required, what I'd recorded and and these sounds of crying kept kind of coming through, you know, through my headphones from the TV. And sometimes other things, you know, like these really violent sounds that I would instinctively know was from the news reports. So that kind of, also this cutting again, that kind of cut really deeply into my experience with my own music, purely through, um, the kind of co-presentness. Um, so it was it, in a way natural but very unnatural as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started thinking a lot about these connections between crying and singing, which is obviously always um, something that listeners are aware of because when you hear a voice that you find very, very moving, it's a sort of, you hear it as a cry, I think. And you kind of, and this, this is what I've, like growing up I've been listening to lots of music and voices and and there are certain voices that just kind of makes my body sing and kind of make makes me feel very touched and it kind of just um, yeah it creates a little cry in the body so I think this was the sort of real life repetition of that recognition I think and so I started thinking about that crying versus singing and how connected they are but in a very different context
really started working with voice when I got my first four track recorder. And this is <coughs> maybe 12 years ago or something. And um, before that I was singing in, a, in bands and stuff, but but that was, that was really when I got to work with um, voice as something to record and to then edit and make into something that wasn't, that was more than just, um, yeah, that kind of regular singer-songwriter approach, which I've then come to appreciate again later, because I think a lot of, I've had so many fears about singing, and maybe that is actually why I'm so interested in it, because it engages with so many fears of stereotypes that I have in myself. So it's the kind of, <laughs> maybe it's my, my Protestant guilt. <laughs> well, actually, I think that is, that wouldn't be as close as if, if I'd put in something that I was really afraid of, because sounding like Paris Hilton is, is very sort of outre. Um, it's very, it's funny, it's ironic. Uh, and it's something that I would never, I would never sound like her and mean it, I could, it, but it's more like a game, like a playing a game of, of um, making myself sound like her. If it had been a very, like if it had been um, my voice really wanting to sound like somebody I'd listened to a lot and then somebody had pointed that out as a, you know, as the reviewers do, oh, you just sound like Kate Bush or something, that would have probably hurt more, even if I was realizing it myself. Um, back in the day when I had more fear about the, these things. Now I find it very interesting to actually go there and see, you know, I've had, I've had so many doubts about the, the, the value of singing and the value of so many things that are considered more female, and now I'm very interested in that. So maybe I kind of have come to that through engaging with all these surfaces, like Paris Hilton and porn, and then kind of realized that Ah, the next step is then to go to what, it, what is really dangerous. Maybe making something that sounds like pop. Yeah. 